Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Miranda Hughes. Um, if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. And if you're not and you've been here for a while, thanks for being committed and being a subscriber and just like being a part of my channel. I really appreciate having you guys. Um, just so you know, uh, first of all, I got my tea. <laughs> it is, y'all gonna laugh at my setup here, so I gotta move this around. Let me like, okay, so let me move this. It is the Twinnings Lemon and Ginger Herbal Tea. There we go. Normally, when I used to have a lot more money, I actually would just buy the straight up lemon and the ginger. And then I would just like put, I don't know, like two slices of lemon take like a little nub off of the ginger and just like peel it and then cut it in half. Um, Cause you, I don't know, that's just how I did it. And then I would put it in my tea. The tea that I used to use a couple years ago would be like, I think it's at Kroger, but it's like a blueberry, pomegranate, um, Aki, I think is how you pronounce it. Aki berry or I don't know. But anyways, it was like antioxidant. So I would do that with you know, a tablespoon of honey, of honey, can't talk, and then, um, like I said, I would put, um, a little bit of, you know, two, one to two slices of lemon, and then about, I don't know, one or two little nubs of ginger in there, like a straight up raw ginger, and I would sip on this, like, all day, whenever I went to work, and it would help, but, you know, God changed my circumstances, or maybe I did, I don't know, um, God's still revealing pieces to me on certain things, but either way, I found this tea, um, and I'm not sure who it was, um, but thank you to whoever mentioned the elderberry tea. Um, I definitely want to try that one next. Um, I, I was going to get it, but even though I already got the lemon and ginger picked out, but I was going to get the elderberry just because like, well, I mean, it looks like it was good for, you know, sickness and all that. However, I'm not sure how it was going to taste, and I was afraid that it would taste like nasty cough medicine or something. I don't know why, but this is what I had in my head. So I did not go for it, but I know y'all didn't come here for tea, but I'm just, um, you know, just letting you know that, uh, I do have it today. So it's definitely going to help my throat. Um, it's been helping a lot. So thank y'all for whoever's been doing prayers for me and just, um, sending me good vibes and just kind of like thinking about me and stuff like that in a positive way because I definitely feel it and I still feel like there's something like caught in my throat but like I said like God's working every day so I just I appreciate him you know glory give I give glory to him on that um excuse me <coughs> so um I do want to say <laughs> Um, this video today is actually, and let me just shine this back over. Sorry. I'll show you guys my setup if you're interested. <laughs> Glory be to God on what's going on right now because, <laughs> okay, you ready? <laughs> okay, so like, I got my LED light. Sorry to shine that in you. And then I got like Bush's beans <laughs> and chicken noodle soup to hold up this light. And then there's my lemon thing that I have standing on my hickory smoked ham. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> that's what I have going on. And I, I don't know why I felt like I needed to show you guys so you guys can see that I'm a lot like you guys. Like, if God's told you to do something, don't worry about what you do or don't have. Just be content. Because like I said, right now, I have an extension cord plugged into the wall over here. And... I am charging my phone that way because I only had 30% and I realized my brother changed the lights which is amazing because it's like it needed to be done but there's three light bulbs and two of them look more yellowish and only one looks super bright so they're not even in color and it just made me look like I had severe raccoon eyes and I'm not wearing my hat so <sighs> you know just rolling with the punches. <coughs> excuse me and um you know I got my tea 
But anyways, let's get into it. And if you haven't noticed, I'm kind of stalling a little bit because I'm not sure how to feel about this song. God gave it to me yesterday. Actually, he gave it to me about a month ago and I brushed it off because I'm like, it's um, Apologize by One Republic. And I brushed it off because I'm like, I thought that was the enemy trying to, you know, come in my mind and trying to convince me that it's too late for my person to say um, I'm sorry to me. So I shoved it down. And then um, over the last month, I have had people reach out telling me that this is too hard or um, they don't know what to do or it's really like uh, just very like highs, lows, confusing. Um, you know, is God really wanting me to stand for this, you know, marriage or stand for this relationship or um, their spouse or whatever it is. And a lot, another thing that has been a reoccurring theme is a lot of you guys are still very angry with your person and so when God gave me this song it was yesterday and I mean it was hard like I mean I was singing this song and I brush it down because I'm like oh it's a nice song but I don't I did not want to you know talk about it but this is God's platform he gave it to me and he gave me my voice and he gave me the ability to speak and so I'm letting him have the floor this is his time, his hour. He's allowed to speak whatever he wants to speak. Um, I did pray to God about this earlier. I told God that you can have the floor because I don't know what to say. And it's not really the best message, but it is the truth. So there's two sides to this. Um, this will relate to you for one or two reasons, if not both. It could be both, but the first, the first connection to this song that a lot of you may have is representing how people who have done you dirty, wrong, been so um, cruel to you in the past, or just you know downright just disrespectful and just not very kind. Those people is where this applies because obviously it is too late for them to apologize. What's done is done. They made their choice. They had, this is, you know, kind of talking about your exes, toxic people, narcissistic people that are um, not your spouse, um, people that you attempted to have a relationship with and they drug your, your name through the mud. They took you for granted. They took everything from you. Uh, they left you with nothing. They basically just hung you up high and dry and just took off, you know, like, uh, and, or the other thing, they were trying to keep you and they were just very abusive. And, uh, <coughs> and they were just playing mind games. They were trying to manipulate you, control you, um, doing the narcissistic thing that the narcissistic, narcissistic people do best. Um, but all in all, like, that's the first group of people that this is for is just know just about every one of us fall into that category because think about it. We all have someone who did us wrong at some point. We all have someone, an ex who is trying to wiggle their way back into our lives right now if they are given access. So that is why if you have not blocked them, you need to get on it. If God's led you to that and you just have been disobedient and ignoring him because you're like, just don't leave that door open. You guys are broken up. You guys are exes for a reason. And it's not, you guys already had the, you're, the person already had an opportunity to treat you well and they failed. They had an opportunity to make amends with you and they chose not to. Or if they did, they weren't very sincere. Um, they had an opportunity to have a life with you. They fumbled you. They did not heal you. They did not help you. They made life more difficult, more challenging, just worse for you. Okay. So that is group number one for apologize by one Republic. Again, pretty much 90 to hundred percent of us fall into that category. The second category is probably, I would say maybe one to 5% of us, um, on this journey 
of standing for a prodigal spouse, whether you guys have been married before and you guys are just legally separated or divorced right now, or if you guys have, you know, God has revealed to you who your person is and you're just in denial because now you're like, you want nothing to do with them, or you've had a relationship with them in the past, you weren't, in, maybe you were engaged or maybe you weren't, you weren't married, but you definitely, you know, weren't married. It was either you guys were engaged, excuse me, to be married, or you guys were just dating or just in a relationship and something went wrong and you guys basically split. So, <coughs> excuse me. Okay. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on this just because I really didn't want to give this message, but it's not about what I want or don't want to do. This is what God needs me to do. So unfortunately, this song did make it to the list because at first I didn't understand it. At first I thought it was about the prodigal, um, your person, uh, and it could be partially that too. Like they might feel like it's too late. Um, for them to apologize to us. But if God, think about it. If God is giving them the green, the green sign, if he's giving them the go, 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 like go to, go back to them, the, the clear, you're in the clear, like go ahead and reach out, go ahead and say something, go, not you, but to your person. If God's saying, go ahead and reach out, contact them, get a hold of them. If he's saying that, He's not going to be the one putting this in their spirit. It's going to be the devil. Okay. So that's why I had to ask God about this because he gave it to me yesterday and I was going to do this video earlier today, but I wanted to sit on it because I just wanted to make sure that I did not release this video until I knew a little bit more details of what it is that God was speaking about. And like I said, at first I thought it was about the prodigal and the more I sat with it, you know, kind of quiet about it. God brought it to my attention and he said, no, it's about us. Mainly us. Uh, the number one reason that everyone can relate to it is because we all have some person or people in our past, whether it be family members, coworkers, old friends, um, old business partners, um, old flings, old one night stands, old you know, relationships, boyfriends, girlfriends, um, people of interest who had did us wrong, dirty, and just fumbled their opportunity when they had a chance to be with us and they just messed it all up. They had their time, their moment, their year, their opportunity to apologize, to make it better, make it right, and they did not. So now that God is releasing these marriages and releasing prodigals back and he's releasing all of these people back into the lives where they're supposed to go, you also have the devil that's trying to send out counterfeits. You also have the devil that's trying to make things confusing and harder for you. So that's why just know if it's someone coming into your DMs, Someone coming into your messenger, your text messages, your voicemails, emails, any, any kind of thing. It don't matter how they're trying to get in. It's the fact that we all have people who we deleted out of our lives or blocked or said we don't ever want to talk to again or something and we meant it. Some of us even, if you're, if you're like me, some of you have people that are on a restraining order. Mine expired last year. I didn't go for another one because I'm tired of running and I'm tired of being scared. And God, you know, I put it in God's hands. So, some of you even took it that far, like I did. That's what I'm talking about. Is people like that, it is too late for them to say they're sorry. Because they drug it on. They messed it up. And I'm not saying that we didn't have a part to play in making some of the matters worse. We probably didn't weren't super mature and didn't do the best that we could have been as a Christian. But you know what? That was then. And that's what we knew how to do or behave back then. That's group one. Group two is, like I said, people that are just really bitter and angry still towards their prodigal. And that's where God's like, that's not okay. 
if you're if you're feeling super angry still or dissatisfied or upset or distraught over what your person did or didn't do to you then you're not your healing process on this journey is not over okay i love you guys and i'm trying to say this as nicely as possible but it's like and i've been there i would go back and forth on this where i would forgive my person and then a thought would creep in my mind and i go right back to being angry and i'm like god i, I just had to keep saying this over and over god please help me forgive my person Please help me overlook this. Please help me to get past this. And then when that didn't work, not because God didn't work, but because maybe I didn't believe that I could be, that he could be forgiven. Or maybe I just thought I was just, you know, saying it and not truly expressing it in my heart. Then I would ask God, like, God, could you please give me a new perspective on how to forgive my person? Would you please show me, you know, what's going on on his end so that I could have better understanding. And when you do that, you've got to be open to whatever it is that God's going to reveal to you. And I promise you, God's not going to fail. He's going to come through. Now, it might be some small tidbits of information like what I've been giving you, or it could be big chunks. It depends on what your needs are. And God only knows that because he knows you and he knows your heart and he knows exactly where you are at right now. You can't hide it from him. You can't deny it. There's no lying to God, so don't even try. Be open, be honest, be real, be genuine when you're talking to God. Because it makes, I mean, I get it. You want to hide sometimes and you would like to admit that you're fully healed. But trust me, God wants you to be open and honest in a true conversation with him more than anything else. And if that involves crying, if that involves I'll just be honest, if it involves lashing out and just like screaming or whatever, I mean, is it immature? Yeah, but you know what? If you need to get it out, get it out. If you are facing a spirit of anger, you need to ask for deliverance to remove that. You need to be able to repent. You need to be able to ask for forgiveness from God yourself. You need to be able to have God help you forgive yourself and have God help you forgive other people because the other reason you're having a hard time forgiving your your person is because you haven't forgiven yourself and you haven't forgiven other people around you and I, oh well, thank you holy spirit and that is why it's so hard for you to forgive your prodigal or your person because now you're too wrapped up in what other people did to you on top of what your person did to you and you're shutting down and God's like, I did not bring you this far to shut down. I did not bring you this far to stop now. I didn't bring you this far to stop praying. I didn't bring you this far for you to turn back. Because the other song, I don't know, I don't even know what song it is, but I just keep hearing it in my spirit is no turning back, no turning back, no turning back, which means we're moving forward. There's no time for regrets. There's no time to be playing around or to be, that's mainly for myself too. There's no time to just, you know, to think that you can hold on to this emotion, this anger, and sit on it. No, that's not what we do as Christians. You're allowed to be angry. That's a given. You're allowed. But God says be angry and do not sin. Which means don't be having hatred in your heart. Because God considers hatred like murder. Yeah, I'm saying that. That's what I had to look at. Anytime that I would resent, because, and here's the other thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you're not careful, if you're not able to forgive your person, then that means you're, you're starting to step into resentment territory, resentment, which means you can't. And I, I actually told an ex of mine this once when we were getting um, closure, I tried to reconnect with him and he was still angry with me about a lot of stuff. And I flat out, this was before I even knew that God had called me for stuff. I looked him dead in the eye and I flat out told him, I said, you cannot love me and resent me at the same time. So that is another reason if you are feeling stuck because you're angry with where you're at and you just want to move along. This isn't TikTok. This isn't Instagram. This isn't whatever. This is reality. Okay. There is no, can we skip to the good part? No. You're living the good part. You got to live it out to get to the good part. You got to work it out to get to the good part. You have to pray it out to get to the good part. 
There is no can we skip it because we don't skip seasons or lessons on this journey. And not very many people get to go on this journey. So first of all, feel honored that God chose you to do it. Second, if he did choose you to do it, you have what it takes. You might think you don't, but you do. God will never give you something that he never gave you the ability to do. Which means if you need strength, ask for it. If you need some comfort, ask for it. If you need knowledge, wisdom, understanding, grace. Think of, think of like going to God when you go to the grocery store. He is the warehouse for your whereabouts and your, your wisdom and everything that you need. He has it all lined up on a shelf and it's like, what do you need? Let me go get it for you. All you got to do is ask. That's it. Ask, seek, knock. All right. That's an extremely long introduction, but I, I had to go there because, you know, God's like, no, this is not a time to give up or turn around or, or, or turn back. It's a time to move forward. Your promise is right around that corner. Your breakthrough is right, right there. You're like an inch away. Inch. You know what it looks like right now? It looks like if you were running a race, you're one step away from crossing that finish line. One. And you're staring right at the end of the line. You're looking at it, but you're like, man, I'm so tired. I'm fed up. I'm done. All you gotta do is take that step. Take that step. If you're five feet from it, it doesn't matter. The point is you can see the finish line. You can see it. You can sense it. You can almost touch it. You're that close. And if you give up or turn back now, you're going to regret it. Like, I don't know how to tell you. You're going to regret it. Now, God doesn't waste. There's nothing wasted or in vain when you're doing anything for God. Don't get me wrong on that. Excuse me. <coughs> but I can tell you. We have already in our lives lived the coulda, shoulda, wouldas. We don't have time for that. If you're scared, you can do something afraid. And the only way you're going to find out is if you step out to find out what it is that God did or didn't say if you're not sure. Sometimes the only thing God wants you to do is make a move, period, and he'll take care of the rest. But he's not going to do nothing unless you make a move because he's already made a move. It's like chess. He made a move. It's your turn. Now you make a move. He makes a move. You make a move. If you guys been, I know y'all are on YouTube or else you wouldn't have found me here, but I'm just saying there is a commercial or an advertisement that is on YouTube and it's talking about some type of new phone that came out. I forget which one it is. So forgive me, but it's talking about the background song. This is like how God speaks to me. Like I'm minding my own business. I'm just watching videos and then this advertisement comes on and it's, um, when you move or yeah, when you move, I move when I, or when I move, you move, when I move, you move, uh, whatever that advertisement is, it's about a, a phone, some kind of phone. And <coughs> I think it's by Ludacris. Yeah. When you move, I move just like that. When I move, you move just like that. And that's what God's saying is that's how he was encouraging me over the last couple weeks is like, I know you're tired, but when I make a move, you make the next one. He'll let you, I'm going to stop rambling, but I'm just saying, don't be afraid to make your move. Okay. God's got your back. He's going to get you through it. And if you mess up, it's okay. Pick yourself back up. Try again. Start over. Do it differently. Whatever. But you got to do something. You can't just stay stuck and stagnant. You can't just be angry with where you're at because anger if, and that's actually part of the reason why you are angry is because you're stuck because you're not doing nothing and it causes frustration and if you have been doing something and you're trying everything excuse me then that's how you know that it's time for you to let God take over and him do a move if you've done everything that you can absolutely think of that God has told you to do and you still are not seeing progress or the results that you want Time to step back and be like, all right, God, your turn. 
You do it. That's what I do. God, you do it. I'm done. You do it. You do it. And he will. <laughs> and he'll do it better than what you thought or ever could think or imagine. Ephesians 3.20. So that's the introduction to this. I'm going to keep this really short. But the song that he gave me is Apologize. And it's by One Republic. And it says, I'm holding on your rope. Got me 10 feet off the ground. And I'm hearing what you say, but I just can't make a sound. You tell me that you need me, then you go and cut me down, but wait. You tell me that you're sorry, didn't think I'd turn around and say that it's too late to apologize, it's too late. It's I said it's too late to apo apologize, it's too late. I'd take another chance, take a fall, take a shot for you, and I need you like a heart needs a beat, but it's nothing new. I loved you with a fire red, now it's turning blue, and you say... Sorry, like the angel heaven let me think was you, but I'm afraid it's too late to apologize. It's too late. I said it's too late to apologize. It's too late. Again, I gave you an extremely long introduction. Um, it's for two categories. The first one, everyone can relate to this song by someone in our past who did us wrong in the worst way possible and they didn't treat us right or well and they did not do their best to make amends or if they did they didn't mean it um they may have went a very long time they may have not even made amends at all and <coughs> excuse me and because of that now all of a sudden that they see god's glory on your life now that they're starting to catch wind of what you're doing and everything now they're trying to come back and apologize or now they're trying to wiggle their way into your life and god's like no no um i had an old friend who back in 2015 when i moved in with my brother the first time um after i left the nine-year relationship that i was in i came back to my brother's house and i was on unemployment I only had like four bills, but it was a struggle to pay for them. Um, I was lost and broken, like heartbroken, and then also soul broken. Like I just didn't know my worth or my value. I had nowhere to really go to live, and I had nowhere or idea of what I was going to do with my life because it felt like my whole life shattered. So this was 2015. My brother let me live with him, and it was just my twin brother, him and I, that's it. And I lived with him for four years. So from 2015, yeah, June 2015 to June 2019. So when I first moved in with my brother, I started hanging out with this girl who lived down the street. She introduced me to a friend from a town over from the, the hometown that I'm in. And her and I ended up clicking. And that's how I met her was through um, the friend down the road. Well, her and I ended up clicking way better than me and the friend down the road. She got jealous and she left. But me and the friend that lives in the town over started to hang out regardless. Like, we just clicked. And she had a lot more money than I did, or at least she was wiser with it. And like I said, I was on unemployment. Um, I didn't really have a whole lot of money or a lot of help. Uh, I had some bills, but I wasn't really, you know... I didn't really prioritize them very much, put it that way. And I remember when we would go out to eat to like B-dubs or, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, I would pick like the sample, not the sampler. It would just be like a um, appetizer. That's what I would pick as my meal because it wasn't even like the $14.99 one. It was like the $5 pretzel. Okay. And that's because that's all I could afford, but I wanted to hang out and have fun. And... Like I said, I just wanted to feel accepted. So I would do that with her. And that's what she, she got to know me as an introduction to me on that level of who I was as a person, as far as my status or whatever I was in life, I guess. And I guess I don't know how else to say it in a worldly term. But, um, so that was 2015. By 2019, after four years and all the hell I went through and the guys that I, you know, attempted to date and, you know, been with and the mistakes I made, I started growing up a lot more and started to get a lot more wiser. Um, I walked with God, but it wasn't like the way that I'm walking with him today. Um, I had like a daily devotions and sometimes I'd read my Bible, but like 
and I knew I was different, but I just didn't understand how different. And so the day that I told her that I was getting my very first apartment for myself, no boyfriend, no friends, no roommates, no family, no nothing, just me. And I thought she would congratulate me, but when I told her the news, the first thing that came out of her mouth was, can you actually afford that? And I was like, wow, like, thanks for their support. Um, didn't know you felt that way. And it was just like a big ordeal. And she actually never did come visit my apartment. I lived there for almost three years, kept trying to get her to come. And then I remember like a year and a half when I got my apartment after I had it, she got herself a little place. She invited me. I went to go check out her place and have dinner with her and stuff. Afterwards, she still never went and came and visited me. Um, even though she would be on roads that were going past the town that I was living in, so she could have stopped by, she never did. So when God finally told me enough was enough, I stopped hanging with her and I unfriended her on, on Facebook. She immediately reached out and she was so upset. She was wanting to know why I unfriended her. And I had to tell her the truth. I told her, I called her out and told her everything. And I was like, you know what? We've been friends for like four or five years and... I thought you'd be happy for me when I got an apartment. You weren't. Um, I thought you would come check out my apartment. You didn't. I did it for you because I wanted you to do it for me. And even after that, you still didn't. And every time, you know, you'd be on your way past my, my town that I was living in, you still didn't stop by it. And I told her, I don't know, understand why it's so hard for you to just drop in for like five to 15 minutes just to check it out at least once. You couldn't even do that just once. And then I told her how, because there's so much distance, it was like, I used to live 20 minutes away from her when I lived with my brother. When I moved to the, the place where my apartment was, we were now an hour away. So if we did hang out, it was like always me driving to her. And she would complain about gas money. I'm like, how do you think I feel every time I have to go meet you? So that's what, this is the example I'm giving about myself to just let you know how this can relate to you is... People like that, whether they be friends, relationships, coworkers, family members, you're the one putting in all the effort to, to accommodate their needs and help them and be there for them. You're doing your part um, in the relationship, friendship, partnership, whatever it is. And unfortunately, they're not give, they're not returning that to you. They're not giving back to you what you put in. So now you feel like you're getting an empty return. And even though it's not about that, it's just the fact that as far as don't do or give something to someone, you know, expecting to get anything in return. It's just the fact that God knows your heart and he knows their heart. And he knows that you don't deserve to be treated like that. You know, to give your all and someone barely even give you a sliver of an ounce of what you've given them. So they got to go, bye-bye. <laughs> so that's basically what happened. And yeah, so here we are. And this person just reached out, like literally either the day of Christmas or the day after and wish me a Merry Christmas. Now, I wasn't rude because I, I did end up accepting her as a friend again, but the trust is gone. Like, we don't hang out anymore. Um, she gave me a friend request like a year ago, um, right before I moved back in with my brother. And, you know, I was thinking, God, did I make the right choice by allowing her to be back in my life? And God said, yeah, that's fine. Just keep her on the, she's on the sideline. She's on the distance now. She can watch you and love you from a distance, but she doesn't deserve to be up center and close in your life because she wasn't like that when she was running around with me as a close friend. And she literally called me her 20 minute friend. And I didn't understand what it meant until she told me that she would, if she had, her and I would go to hockey games together and Back then, when I used to drink, we'd go to the bars and stuff together. But she basically one day just, I don't know, cat out of the bag, just said that she would contact, I don't even know, however many lists of people on her list of people to contact. And if they all said no or were busy, then she would message me and I would be the last person she would ask to invite. And then that left me with like only 20 minutes to get over to Illinois because she lived over in the next state that gave me no time to do hair and makeup or anything and she, it would always catch me off guard so it's like and she didn't care she'd be like well if you're wanting to come you have to be here now and it's like so it was just really stressful on the and I'm sorry to go into so much detail on that but just so you guys know 
that's my background, my story. And like I said, this person literally, this is just one of my friends, um, old friends. She reached out to me the, just a few days ago to wish me a Merry Christmas. I wasn't rude or disrespectful. I still wished her a Merry Christmas. And that was that. And that's what God's saying is like, when, they, when they're coming back to apologize, some of them actually are trying to apologize. But God's saying, no, you don't even get that. I mean, if they happen to manage the, the words to say, I, I'm sorry for the way I treated you or whatever, then yeah. Go ahead and tell them you forgive them. You know, make amends, do your thing. But a lot of them, they're, they still have a lot of pride or a lot of ego or they're still like hoping they can just treat you the somewhat the same way that they used to. Um, instead of apologizing, they're just trying to small talk their way back into your life. Just like, I don't even know. I'm not even going to try to give examples on that. The point is they're just trying to wiggle their way and God's like, no. It is history between you and those people. Even if you still interact with them or whatever, kind of like how I did with my old friend, it's going to be small talk. It's like, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. That's it. Or, hey, how are you? And it's like, good, how are you? And that's that. It's not, if they ask you, hey, can, you want to hang out on a Friday night? You got to learn to be able to say no. And, you know, if they want to know why, just you don't have to be rude or mean. You can just say, sorry, I have a lot going on tonight. Thanks for the invite, though. And then leave it at that. And if they feel whatever kind of way, let them be angry. Let them be sad. Let them be questioning why you don't hang out with them anymore. Because now God's going to break it down to him. He'll reveal it to him. He will. You don't have to explain everything. And then, like I said, <coughs> excuse me, the other one. Uh, if it's a relationship, they just treated you wrong and took you for granted. And it's like, they don't deserve to ever have another shot at dating you or being married to you or anything like that. If they're not the, the person that God told you would be your spouse, they're not it, period. It doesn't matter how many times they come back and apologize. It doesn't matter how sincere they are. They can apologize all they want, but it's like, they're not. It's not going to move them closer in your heart. It's not going to bump the position. God chose the person he has for you. And if that person that's coming back to apologize is not your spouse, you don't try to make anything of it other than, oh, thanks for apologizing or I forgive you. And that's it. It. You know, if you, you don't need to meet them to get closure unless God's instructed you to do that. For the most part, you don't need to meet them or associate with them. You know, just let it go and just continue moving forward. But when it says I'm holding on your rope, got me 10 feet off the ground is like sometimes um, these people kind of made you feel good a little bit. Like they boosted you up a little, a little bit, not a whole lot. 10 feet isn't very high. I mean, it, it kind of is, but it's not that high. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Like maybe they, if they had a lot of money, they would pay for you or they would, like I said, my friend would take me to hockey games. And it's like, sometimes I didn't have the money for that. And it's like, it was really nice to be able to go be very up close or we went to a baseball game or sometimes they would cover me at the bars and stuff like that. So I felt good when I was with them, but... Like I said, when when it was all said and done or over with, I would still feel empty or I would still feel like they didn't hear me or they didn't understand me or they just didn't click with me as much as I would hope they would. Um, the part where it says, you tell me that you need me, then you go and cut me down. Um, so obviously, like I said, they build you up and then they bring you down. That can be with their words. It can be with their intentions and actions. It could be anything. Um, you tell me that you're sorry, didn't think I'd turn around and say that it's too late to apologize. So you're, the pattern here is that they mess up, they make a mistake, they say something extremely harsh or inappropriate or just very crude, um, or even sometimes just a, a very crude or rude joke, and you look at them or you say something to them, like, excuse me, and they just laugh it off, they're like, oh, sorry, or... And you just go along with it, like, okay, like, you know, if that, if you're saying you're sorry, then I guess I'll have to forgive you and whatever. 
<coughs> excuse me so this time it's like you're they're not expecting you to actually put your foot down and stand your ground and actually defend yourself and say no i'm not accepting it like not the the apology but i mean like you can accept the apology you don't have to accept the pattern or behavior so because the next part says i take another chance take a fall take a shot for you and i need you like a heart needs a beat but it's nothing new so again you giving your all to this person whether it be a friendship or a relationship or a family member you will go you will bend over your back for this person you will give your last dollar your last item your last the shirt off your back you will give them the last of anything the first meal like you will give them the best and this person is not like you you know they um they may not catch you when you fall they may not take a shot whether it be like an actual you know fire shot for you or just taking the hit or the heat for you in a tough situation they may not have your back the way that you had theirs um and that's why the next part says i love you with a fire red now it's turning blue and you say sorry like the angel he heaven let me think was you so red fire is pretty hot but blue fire is the hottest so this is why it kind of didn't make sense to me <coughs> excuse me hold on so blue fire is actually the hottest flame so but also the color blue just represents sadness um so that's why what god gave me was is the love that you had for this person used to be blazing red like it used to be um full of life and just full of just fullness for them and then after you discovered that this person is narcissistic or manipulative controlling or just really when god exposed the true colors of them of their nature and behavior now it's like your heart turned blue like it turned sad um, and then also just burning up in anger because now it's like you feel betrayed and you feel like how could this person be treating me like that how did I miss that or everything you denied and you're like wow there's the truth slapping me in the face like and then the part where it says sorry like when you say sorry like the angel heaven let me think was you they're talking about being deceived and the, you know who does that best the devil he deceives us every day or at least attempts to um <coughs> excuse me i wouldn't say he deceives us every day but he like i said attempts to so depending on how long your friendship was or partnership was or how long you've been close to this family member or coworker you're just kind of like wow like i can't believe all this time You've actually been backstabbing my back instead of having me in the back or having my back, you know. Um, so, again, I already touched base on the whole prodigal situation. I'm not going to go any more into detail about that. But as far as like everyone else that's upset about something or someone, this is why God's not playing when he says you need to be seeking him for forgiveness for yourself. The way that you handled your anger, the way that you handled um, what's in your heart. To ask, just ask him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ask God right here, right now to just, you know, you can say it out loud or you can say it in your head. But just ask God to be able to forgive these people who did or did not know what they were doing to you. And also um, ask God to help cleanse your heart. To get rid of any bitterness, malice, anger, strife, uh, stagnancy, um, just idleness. I've had to pray to God about that a lot um, here lately because it's just like a spirit of rebellion or a spirit of procrastination. Ask him to help deliver you from that and to free you from that. Um, spirit of depression, spirit of anxiety. Ask him to remove those things out of your heart. So that way you can be clear minded and have um, a better attitude, not just towards yourself and God and those around you, 
But when your person comes back, you're coming back, they're going to come back with you having a more cleansed heart. So you're not so cluttered with all these emotions and all this pent up anger and pent up unforgiveness. Okay. So basically the, the key message here is, yes, people are allowed to come back and apologize to you. Is it, is it too late for those people that are trying to do that? Yes and no. To the ones that had their opportunity and they failed to do it, yes, it's too late. To the ones who you were extremely close with and God is allowing them to be able to say sorry because they know that they were meant to tell you it and they just delayed it, God's going to allow it. You need to be able to receive it and just say, thank you, I forgive you, or what, you know, like, I don't trust you anymore, but I want to say thank you for coming forward to apologize to me. You can say that. And you can leave it at that. If there's people that have assaulted you, abused you, neglected you, harmed you physically, sexually, mentally, whatever, and they're trying to reach out to you and send you friend requests, DMs. If you don't feel safe about it, talking to them, don't answer, okay? You can, you can accept things in the spirit by saying like out loud. You can say their name and say, I forgive them or I forgive you. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's all you have to do. That's really all you have to do. You do... It's, it's hard. I hope this is making sense. Um, <coughs> excuse me. For your prodigal or the person that God has told you who your spouse is, it's definitely not too late for them to apologize. In fact, if they come back to apologize, you need to be ready to receive that. But like I said, a lot of our emotions and our unforgiveness is blocking it and getting in the way. And God's like, we got to get that out of the way. So that when they come back to apologize properly and appropriately, we can receive that, you know? All right. I hope that helped you guys. Again, that was apologize and it was by One Republic. Sorry for the very long message, but uh, like I said, it needed to be addressed. So I love you guys. Thank you for following along and sticking till the end if you have. God bless you and uh, give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.